when Connor Riley was in here, he said that uh, Avery Johnson is up in the offices pretty much 24-7 talking with you and him about stuff. What uh, What's the main thing he's talked to you about this spring? Oh, man. I don't know. Let's see where to start with that. I mean, the kid, first of all, he um, you know, has such a deep desire to be great, wants to be, wants to be coached. Um, he's taken an iPad full of notes for the last two months. And um, we talk about everything that ranges from a scheme, um, how to read things, to uh, progression reads, high lows, half field reads, full field reads, um, to QB footwork and what with the timing of routes, um, two minute mechanics, uh, general two minute notes, um, demeanor. Uh, it's been a minute since I've talked to a quarterback about how to call play in a huddle. So that was a new one for me. Uh, not a new one, an old one, but something new that we haven't done recently. But. Um, all those little things about playing quarterback, leadership, um, things to um, improve on. Um, man, I could go on and on. We talk about a, a plethora of things um, individually, but then also, you know, as a, as a QB unit, um, I think those are continued um, conversations that, you know, situation mastery, a bunch of game situations. I mean, we could go on and on. It. Um, I would say um, a lot of that, and then oftentimes it's it's fun and it's it's uh, it's lively and joking and back and forth and and all that. So, is there anything that surprised you about Avery since you've gotten to know him a little bit? Uh, I think maybe just how consistent of a passer he is. To be honest with you, I don't. That certainly is not um, talked about. I don't think enough, but he's got a small body of work on game day. Not, I mean, maybe less than 100, 100 snaps um, on game day. And so I think that that's something that I've seen, you know, I don't know, 500 and some balls this spring. Uh, the consistency of his release point, consistency and accuracy of his passes and different. Um, he's able to layer balls up and, and throw with different velocities. And I think that's something that I didn't know. I'm not surprised, but I didn't know that. And I think those are all um, evaluations that you get when you're on it with uh, with the young man on a daily basis. Coach Wells, how is the uh, what's your philosophy on the use of tight ends, employing them, and and really what have you seen from K State's room and how they've developed with Avery Johnson this spring? Yeah, I like that room. Uh, Brian, Coach LePac has done a really good job with that room. They are, um, they're big, they're strong, and they got really good hands. Um, some of them block a little bit better than others. Some of them run a little bit better than others. But um, I've had a big experience, um, you know, back in my, you know, even when I coached tight ends at Tulsa to when I was at Utah State playing in multiple tight end offices, uh, offenses. And so those, those guys, that, that's, that is K-State. I mean, they're, they're tough, they're disciplined. Uh, they're blue collar. I think they epitomized the program, um, but you know the the young guys, Mets and and um, and Will. Um, I think they got bright futures. Certainly Lofton and and you look at Oakley and Swanee. I mean those guys. I mean you've got a bunch of guys that um, that are vying for playing time. I think you know those guys compete. The second tight end competes against the second running back for playing time. That's what people don't really understand. And, and our locker room sometimes doesn't understand that. Second tight end competes with that third receiver. You know who's the most productive uh, when they get in the game personnel groups that we can be in. Um, so a, a lot of different personnel groups for us, but I, that's a room that, you know, I think that makes us more versatile as an offense. We can pack it in and we can run and we play in a phone booth and get really, really physical with you. Um, be able to finish games off in the run game, but also we can flex some of those guys out and, and we can give 10 personnel picture uh, formations with those guys flexed out. So they give you a lot of versatility as a play caller and, and being able to scheme some things up. And what kind of uh, rapport have each seen transpire between the quarterbacks and wide receivers as the spring has, oh, good. has continued? Yeah, I th and I think, you know, any time that you have uh, some new in, uh, first of all, a new coach here, and with some new schemes getting brought in and things like that, there are um, you know times to grow and times to to learn. 
Uh, they need to know what I'm saying to the quarterback and what Avery's seeing and, and, and being coached to do. And, and I think it's important for, for us as, as quarterbacks to know how they're getting coached. So um, great rapport. Um, you know, again, work ethic um, helps those relationships when they both see each other and how hard they're working, it, whether it's in the meeting room and walkthroughs or in practice. And those guys will always be really good. And that was, that, that was going on before I got here. So that's not, that's not one thing I worry about. In the couple of months that you've been here, what have you kind of learned about how this building works and what's, and what's in that locker room? Yeah, first of all, in that locker room are a bunch of, I mean, it's, it's up here on these walls, wherever it is, uh, the core values. I mean, they epitomize it. And that, that starts at the top from, from Coach Kleiman and Coach True and his staff to, to how these assistant coaches hold these kids accountable. But these players hold themselves accountable to each other. And then they allow coaches to hold them accountable. And they're tough and they're disciplined. And so more than anything, the last two months, I've seen a lot of the how it's done. I knew what it was from the outside looking in and the toughness and the discipline and there's no pre-snap issues on either side of the ball. Everybody gets lined up. Um, they're very disciplined on game day. There's no post-whistle penalties. Um, and then there's the, the running the ball and stopping the run and, and all the stuff that I think, you know, from an, um, you know, you're building the program from the inside out, from the O-line, the D-line out. And that's what this program's been all about. And so cool thing for me is to see the, the coaches and how it's done on a daily basis. And, man, it's, um, I'm glad I'm a part of it. If someone were to watch your guys' offense right now, what would their takeaway be? And what do you want it to be come September? Yeah, I want it to be um, an offense that um, is, is, you know, plays wide open. Um, they're exciting. You know, I'd like to throw the ball to score, and I'd like to run the ball to win. And nothing more satisfying than finishing with the ball in your hands at the end of a football game, um, pounding people and, and making first downs and then taking a knee. And so, um, you know, that's one thing that this program, from the running back room to the O-line room and the tight end room, it's, it, that, that's not going to change here. But throwing the ball to score, and I think an exciting brand, um, something that puts the hands in the, the ball in the hands of our playmakers out on the perimeter um, and getting in a numbers game uh, with the defense and trying to outnumber them um, in a lot of ways. But, but uh, man, we know who our identity is to finish a game, and that's how you want to finish a one no running the ball. Coach Avery's a very skilled runner, very fast. Um, but how do you balance, you and Connor balance, using him as a weapon in the run game while trying to keep him upright and playing all his games. Yeah, that'll be a question that will be um, asked to me probably 25 more times before the end of August um, because that that will be a key. That's a key every week, I think, as I look ahead to, to hopefully a 15-game season. You know, I'm preparing for Avery Johnson to play every snap for 15 games, and that's how he has to prepare his body over the summer gaining weight, gaining strength. And you lift, you eat, you gain weight as a, as a quarterback to get up off the ground and play another snap. You're already going to take seven to eight hits in the pocket in a game. That's just – that's the cost of doing business, throwing the ball. Um, and then you're going to take some scrambling. Uh, but knowing when to get down. Uh, it, did I get the first down? I'm in the open field and, um, and I can slide. And I can step out of bounds and be smart. Um, and then when do I need to put my pads down on, on fourth and short or on the goal line, you know, when the game's on the line? And I think that's, that's him, and he'll have enough savvy to know when to do that. And so certainly um, being very aware of that and understanding that that can take a cumulative effect on a quarterback as the, as the season goes on. But he's got to do his part with gaining weight and gaining strength uh, to be able to withstand some of those hits. I can't remember the last season that Kansas State had a starting quarterback go all 12 games in the regular season. So well, we're not going to run him like Colin did when he played here. Yeah. You know, with all due respect, I mean, Colin, he ain't no doubt, man, and he, and he could do it. Yeah. Um, so give me a breakdown of the other guys in the room. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Jacob Knuth has had a really good spring um, and just seeing a lot of the, the tape from December of bowl prep uh, before the Pop Tarts ball uh, bowl, bowl game of him to now, a lot of improvement. Very happy with Jacob. 
He comes in every day very prepared. He uh, takes a lot of notes, uh, quiet by nature, but that doesn't mean um, uninterested or uninvolved or um, not invested. I promise that. Uh, he is very invested, and he's done a great job, I think, of improving um, his footwork and his, his drops. He has got a, a stronger arm and a better arm than I think you think. And, uh, man, I've been, I've been happy with him. Kellen coming in, um, you know, this has uh, been a step up in ball, um, speed of the game um, in terms of – and all that. But he's done a nice job of learning it, fitting in, and uh, putting himself in a position to compete. Max has, um, you know, kind of played DB and special teams and then went to quarterback in December before I got here and now stayed at quarterback. I love Max. I love having him in the room. He's athletic. Um, he has got, you know, a baby bazooka for an arm. I mean, the ball just shoots right out of his hand, sometimes a lot faster and harder than it needs to. Um, but he is athletic. He can run. He's savvy, smart. He's a great veteran, great, great teammate. And so I think, you know, that, that backup quarterback is a competition that's uh, I anticipate going right up until the first game. And then it potentially could go throughout the season. Um, I'm not afraid to have that. I think uh, competition um, breeds competitive levels that can come out in each other that that you maybe naturally wouldn't have if there was a lack of competition there so that's my job is to create the competition my job is to continue to recruit and improve the room um, and that means not just Avery Johnson it means every one of them in there and so um, I as a coach like I just mentioned I have to prepare try to prepare Avery and he has to prepare himself that he's going to take every snap for 15 games but then I, as a coach, have to be uh, very diligent to have the mindset that I have to prepare a kid that may be playing, you know, a lot of games too, in case Avery gets a hangnail or something. Um, so um, I think that's my job. I have to do that due diligence. And so I have to create that competition in that room with all those guys vying for that backup job. And so uh, that'll be something that'll carry all the way through training camp. Doesn't have to be Jess Avery, but is there anybody on that offense through the spring practices that have, on occasion or multiple times, made you say, oh, wow, that was really impressive? Man, I'm going to tell you, um, I think with the more reps he gets, um, Joe Jack, is, is he flashes for a young back. Of course, game day will tell the true story for running backs. We all know that because of the, the, the load that you have to take. Um, you know, hitting and protecting and getting back up and doing it again. Um, J. Jack flashes every day to me. I love that kid. He's he's twitchy. He's talented. Um, Keenan is a huge um, competitor. He is a competitive dude. And K.J. just, I mean, that dude, um, competitive catches, strong at the top of routes. Um, he flashes every day because of his effort. Um, very intense, really good blocker. All those guys are really on the perimeter. They do a nice job. And so those guys have all flashed. I mentioned every tight end, I think, in the room. They all um, they all are productive. And again, those guys are all competing for playing time. You mentioned the opening question, just kind of glazed over, like, you know, working with Avery, just correcting some things, fixing some mistakes. Were there one or two things that stood out right away that you wanted to fix? And how quickly did those things get fixed? Yeah, I would never look at it with the young quarterback as fix, ever. Because um, if Colin Klein was sitting here today, to be honest with you, you, you have, I've coached a bunch of freshman quarterbacks that have had to play. And the number one um, thing that you focus on as a coach, all right, is his head and getting him in the position and the headspace to be able to compete for you on Saturday and to know what he's doing so he can come compete whether it's in the spring or the summer, but he may have to play on Saturday. And so as a freshman quarterback, you do that. And so um, oftentimes going into their sophomore and their junior year, the main focus becomes, uh, or the major focus becomes um, footwork and timing and where his eyes are and manipulating free safeties and ant antics uh, pre-snap. And so all those little things that go into to playing quarterback, situational, like I mentioned earlier, situational awareness, um, with different situations. Those are all things, nothing to fix, but all of those things are major focuses for a young quarterback moving up to, you know, like his sophomore year. A couple of coaches have, have talked about uh, simplifying some things on, on the offensive end. As someone who, who wasn't on staff last year, 
What's, what's been your view of, of that process throughout spring? Well, I've certainly been a part of that process, and I think I think we all want to do that on both sides of the ball. You want to do that in special teams. Um, I've, I've had that as a former head coach as a focus before. Hey, we got to just simplify some things because I think sometimes you, you, you have the um, impression that something's too hard. That's not so much the case. Sometimes there's conflicting rules or – you know, guys, are, there's too many exceptions to rules just in play calls. And so I think that's what it's meant more than anything. And it's always done in an attempt to play really fast and allow guys to um, see a signal, process it, and then get on the ball and be able to play the game within the game. Some of those things I was just talking about with Avery, the game within the game, uh, processing, um, situational awareness, same thing with receivers and tight ends. He hasn't been able to do anything because he's been hurt, but just in meetings and everything, what, what have you liked from, from Blake Barnett? Uh, well, I tell you, that Blake has really stood out to me in the last two weeks um, because he has taken um, a lot more ownership and just coming in ready um, for meetings in terms of his um, uh, preparation outside the meeting room. With, with not being able to practice. And so that means a lot to me. Football means a lot to Blake. Uh, Blake's a competitive young man. I mean, a uh, tremendous leader. I know for his high school and winning that state championship, uh, courage and um, playing through pain and injury in that state championship game. And he, he wants to be back out there. He'll be back out there full speed and doing everything early June. And uh, so I'm excited about that. But, I mean, just in the meeting room, when I tell those quarterbacks, race to answer the question. If I don't direct the question at somebody, you race to answer it. Because that, to me, is a competitive um, aspect in a meeting room that you can create as a coach. And I mean, the dude is like sitting on the edge of his chair, ready to answer. And uh, called on him the other day, and he had no idea. And he got on the board and, 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 and knew a play cold. Um, something that I hadn't even asked him about. And, and that tells me that he's putting in more work outside the meeting room, and that's, that's really important to establish as a work ethic as a young quarterback before you ever become the starter. You don't just start preparing to be the starter when you're in that seat. You start preparing to be the starter the minute you walk in that room. And you may have to wait you know, one month, one year, it may be three years or four years before you become the starter. But – um, always better to be prepared for an opportunity you don't get than be, you know, unprepared for an opportunity you do get. And so, if that's his mindset, he'll be really, really good when he does get a chance to to take the ball. You know, with uh, with the offensive line, a lot of moving parts, uh, especially with so many new, quote unquote new guys. But are you seeing more clarity there as far as positions and where you're headed in the in the fall yeah and I think you know Riles does a good job of moving those guys around position versatility for O-line is as important as any position out there to have some versatility between guys going from right tackle to left tackle but having all your interior guys being able to flip sides at guard and, and you got to have multiple centers we all know that I mean that's there's nothing uh, having a worse feeling when you when you have a, a center that hasn't done it and has to do it in a game and so I think the, the versatility that he's creating uh, with those guys is good. You know, quite, quite honestly, there, there's some starters that have left out of here that have played a lot of snaps, but um, Riles has done a good job of getting other guys in the game. I mean, they've, played, they've, had, they've got game reps, and so they just may be getting to be full-time starters uh, in a role for the first time, but um, lack of, um, you know, high number of, of game reps do not – diminish one bit uh, the effectiveness of this uh, O-line potentially for this fall. Uh, they'll be tough, um, and I think the chemistry that has continued to develop is good, and we got a bunch of good guys up there. Are you still in the process of, you talked about versatility, is that kind of the focus in the spring more than trying to establish, I guess, more permanent positions? Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't think to me, when you when you do move guys around, um, you force more communication. You are creating uh, opportunities for them to be uh, more versatile. Um, because if you can only play one spot up there on the O line, uh, maybe unless it's center and you don't ever get hurt, um, you know it's 
it's uh, it's a lot tougher to be, you know, I think um, having the ability to play more reps, uh, be able to help your team. Um, that third guard's got to be able to play both spots if he can play center as well. Um, be able to go from left to right. And I think I think that's a misconception that O linemen have to be in the same spot every day, every rep, for there to be chemistry. I don't I don't buy that um, because I think the communication that they have with each other in the meeting room, um, as well as out there at practice, as they're going through that at practice and moving spots, creates that and demands it. To be real frank with you. Also, for the running back, you mentioned Joe Jackson. But just in general, what are your thoughts on? On that group, that room is yeah, it's good. BA's done a really good job of recruiting and developing that room, and you know I, I think the mantra of this of this program of development, and you look at a guy like DJ Giddens, and I mean he's one of the top backs in the country, and obviously in the Big Twelve, and just his versatility to be able to catch the ball in the backfield. But those guys pass pro, those guys will stick their face on on people and stay square and stay thick. You know I think again similar to what I said about the quarterback. Uh, B.A. continues to recruit and develop the competition and create the competition behind D.J. And that is something that we do as assistant coaches is to create that and cultivate that and demand it uh, to continue to raise those guys' game um, because you do need to have more than one back and you need to have uh, versatility with those backs and not being able just to be the, oh, I'm, I can only run it or I can only be the guy that can catch it. you got to be able to pick up uh, pressure and to protect a quarterback. So I think they've done a good job with that. Also, uh, with uh, with a quarterback who's a running threat like like Avery, how important is sort of that chemistry between the the running backs and the and the quarterback? In terms of what? Just as far as you've got how the, I guess how they help each other, the fact that you've got a quarterback that's that dynamic, but then also Obviously, you want the running backs involved. Well, there's nothing more important for um, any kind of quarterback, whether it's Avery as a guy that is a dual threat guy, but to have a solid and a consistent running game. I mean, that's that'll create really good chemistry really quick, you know, as well as having DNs that go rush the passer and can tackle the quarterback and, and get guys in backed up situations and get us the ball back in really good field position. Good to see you, eight. Yeah, I was just going to, you, you and I have talked a lot about what all you've done with Avery. I'm curious about the same amount of reps with, with Connor. What, what's, what's that been like as you guys kind of grow together there? You know, I think, why, first of all, the friendships um, forming. I think, the, you know, being, when you get in the trenches with somebody and you spend time, um, that doesn't always just go real smooth. Um, but I just think, um, you know, a, a most quarterback and most old line coaches usually get along real good because um, you can't have one without the other. Um, and so I believe so much of a quarterback's success is attributed to the old line, is, is because of uh, guys on the perimeter making plays for him, as well as, a, you know, to your point, a really solid running game. But, um, you know, Connor is a guy, and I just said this earlier in another interview, but, um, you know, he's a guy that's. He has a lot more of a broad focus than just the five guys in front of him. And you don't always say that about an O-line coach or, or have that. But he's a guy that has been preparing for this moment um, in his career. And he knows how to um, you know, match combo routes and, and the quarterback's timing and the footwork. And, um, but yet he has an extreme amount of humility to ask and to um, inquire of people's opinions, and um, he's a great leader in that room for us as offensive coaches. And and like I've said earlier, I'm here to serve him. I'm here to serve Coach Kleiman um, and these players in that quarterback room especially. Um, and so that's my role. And so whatever I can do um, to help him out and relieve stress um, or relieve uh, anything that, that he is going as the – or having as the chair at the end of the table, so to speak, in the offensive staff room, that's my job. Um, and that's part of my role here.